beginning its existence in the 1960s and further developed by many contributors, string theory aims to explain what our whole universe is made from at its smallest, most basic level. Just like we know that a house is made from its basic components of each brick, string theory aims to find out what everything, in other words, all matter, is actually made from. We can physically see the basic components of a house, each brick, and so we know the physical shape and dimension of these basic components. And more importantly, we know that the house itself is not the smallest part of its makeup. It is clear it is made of smaller components. So, in light of this, the whole universe and the things within it, such as the world we know and live in, with all of its inhabitants, as well as the other planets, stars and rocks out there in our universe, what is all of this made of at its smallest level? Well, to help explain basic string theory, let's take something a little more interesting than houses and bricks, let's use a person. At the scale that our eyes and brain see and interpret, we have no problem identifying the physical dimensions that makes up a person. For example, their size and shape amongst other things. But if we wanted to know what this human construction was made from, then we would have to look closer and begin to identify its components. When we look at the basic components of what makes up a person and their organs, through a microscope, we see that it is made up of cells. But the question is, what is the cell made of? Are there smaller components that make up the cell? Looking closer, at a deeper microscopic level, we see that the cell is made up of smaller components called molecules. So we now ask the question, what are molecules made of? To answer that we need to look so closely that we are now at the atomic level. Here, we see that molecules are made up of atoms. But it doesn't stop there. Atoms are made up of subatomic particles called protons, neutrons and electrons. Now let us take a closer look at protons and neutrons. What are these subatomic particles themselves made of? These are said to be made of elementary particles called quarks. So, where does string theory enter? Well, according to string theory itself, the quarks and electrons are made from tiny, one-dimensional, vibrating strings. Yes, that's right. According to string theory, everyone and everything you see is made up of tiny vibrating strings at their smallest known level. That is also so for every living thing on our planet, from people to trees and insects, as well as non-living matter such as soil, rock and water. That also goes for everything outside of our planet and throughout the whole universe. But if everything is made up of these same vibrating strings, then why isn't everything in existence exactly the same? Well, just imagine these strings as little vibrating filaments. They can vibrate in a variety of ways and at various frequencies just like a guitar string indeed can. So, the vibrational frequency of a given string or set of strings gives a particular particle a unique set of characteristics. These characteristics give rise to the behavior of the particle, such as its mass and charge. The different vibrational frequencies thus explain why various subatomic particles differ from each other. And the unification of the four fundamental forces of nature, such as gravity and electromagnetism, as well as the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, is the goal of string theory. It implies that these forces are produced by the underlying strings' vibrations and interactions. 
However, in addition to the well-known three dimensions of space, length, width, and height, and one dimension of time as we know it, string theory also provides new dimensions. Since they are concealed at incredibly small scales, these extra dimensions are invisible to us in daily life. Think of a tiny, closely wound spring-like structure. On a much smaller scale, these extra dimensions resemble that coiled shape. We cannot directly see or experience them in our daily lives since they are so little. Only mathematical formulas and theoretical frameworks, like string theory, can be used to deduce their existence. These extra dimensions are closely packed and inaccessible at our macroscopic scale. Unless we explore the universe at really small distances or energies, well beyond our current technological capabilities, they stay hidden and invisible to us. Now let's put these vibrating strings into some sort of perspective for us. So, the various vibrational frequencies of these tiny strings make up the various subatomic particles that make up the various atoms, that make up the various molecules, that make up the various cells, that make up the person we saw in front of us at the beginning. In addition to the aspects we have already seen, there may also be numerous ways to arrange the strings, which may lead to various universes or a multiverse. In this multiverse, each universe might have a unique set of physical rules and characteristics. This concept is also known as the string landscape. String theory, however, is still a work in progress and confronts a number of obstacles, including the difficulty of conducting experimental testing and the enormous amount of potential answers inside the string landscape. In an effort to gain a better understanding of the fundamental makeup of our universe, scientists are still exploring and improving this idea. It's crucial to remember that string theory is a very difficult and mathematically demanding subject of research. This condensed explanation gives a broad perspective, but the actual theory requires a thorough understanding of theoretical physics and incorporates complex mathematical formulas.